God has to do a work. We just, uh, I, I think we struggle to come to terms in a practical way with just how supernatural all this is. Left to ourselves, we will try. We will struggle. We will do what we think we need to do as sort of religious duty. Regard every area of our lives, we are geared to try as the means of getting anything done. But Jesus, of course, teaches uh, that the principle, the life principle that works here is that of the vine and the branches. How does a branch bear fruit? Does it bear it by trying? As we've said so many times, it, you know, it doesn't. It simply has to come to a place where it stops trying, recognizes its inability, and simply looks to the vine for the source of its life. And fruit happens. Fruit doesn't happen because the vine is anything. Fruit happens because there's a life that's there, that's capable of doing whatever needs doing. What a perfect example that, uh, that one from Brother Yoon, uh, the heavenly man, is. And, and how often does God bring you and me to a place where we feel that inability? And I thank God. You know, we ought to be just shouting and praising God when that happens. It's, it's God answering a prayer many times. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. But down in verse 5 of John 15, he says, Jesus says this, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <clears throat> Now that principle, apart from me, you can do nothing, is one of those things where we say, yeah, yeah, I've heard that, I know that, you know, come on, let's get to something good. The fact is, we don't know it very well. This is one we trip over every single day. I appreciate, you know, Steve's testimony this morning. That was a perfect example, but it, afflict, it afflicts all of us. In every of, our, every area of our lives, we try to do stuff ourselves. It, it just comes naturally. It takes the supernatural work of God in us to make us fit to live for him, to serve him, to do everything, because it all, if it doesn't come from him, it isn't worth anything. There's nothing that you and I can produce in the way of righteousness, in the way of religious effort, that will have any eternal impact whatsoever. The sooner we come to that place, the sooner something is going to happen that will last forever. But, you know, it's easy to get hung up on the last part of that. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And we just, uh, you know, it's almost like a downer. You know, here I am. I'm, oh, God, I'm helpless. That's okay. I'll just sit down and let somebody else do it. But that's not what God is after. Because that isn't the whole truth. <coughs> Pardon me. That isn't the whole truth that he's conveying in this verse, is it? Because right before that, he says, if a man remains in me and I in him, and I in him. Notice that. And I in him. There's, there's where the source comes from. There's where, for when Paul preached, that was his expectation, that he knew he couldn't do anything, but there was a sense, I'm Lord, I'm looking to you right now. I'm expecting. I'm not just looking. I'm not just asking. I'm expecting that as you have put me in this opportunity to share the word or to do whatever, that you are going to be doing the work. I'm going to open my lips, but I know that I have no power to do anything. I'm expecting life to happen. But the promise is, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. So you see the two sides of the coin here. On the one hand, yes, we can do nothing, but in him, what? We can do all things, can't we? And I believe that's what God wants us to see so that we don't get bogged down with our inability and our weakness. Paul readily confessed that I was with you in weakness and much trembling and all those, all those expressions. I mean, you know, that was, that's, a, that's not a place we enjoy. Anybody here enjoy feeling like that? No, we, we want to feel like we can handle things. We want to feel like we're in control. We're able. We're smart. We're capable of planning and executing strategies and getting stuff to happen and as it's been said, God has just got to get us to the point where, whew, all right, I'm done, Lord. Nothing's happening. Nothing's working. I can't make it happen. Lord, 
I just stretch forth my hands. You're going to have to do whatever needs doing. Do you know what that's, that's what God's been waiting on? I wonder how many of you and I, how many of us are in that place right now in, in many areas of our lives where we just are struggling and striving. Is the Christian life lived by trying or is it lived by trusting? Yeah, which are you doing today? Which are you doing with respect to sal your own salvation? Yes. You know, nobody ever comes to Christ until I stop trying. That sounds like a contradiction. But it's the truth. So long as you're trying to get God to accept you by any effort on your part, you, you'll never be accepted. I'm not accepted because of anything in me or anything I do. I'm accepted because of his promise and what he has done for me in Jesus. And so all of my focus needs to turn away from anything that I am and just say, Lord, I give up. I give up. I can't help myself. There's nothing I can ever do. But, but you've already done it. And so instead of trying, I'm just going to stop trying and trust. But you know, it never stops being that way. It never, ever, in our walk with God and anything we do in this world, it, that principle never, ever changes. Is that not what the vine and the branches illustration conveys to us? God help me. God, help, you know, I'm, I, I'm especially weak this morning for whatever reason. But you know, we need to learn to say, thank you, Lord. You know, uh, Carl was expressing what I believe is something that God desires to bring forth from every one of us, where we're hungry to learn of God. We're not satisfied to be where we're at. We, we hunger for more of him. That was Paul's confession. He said, I'm forgetting what's behind. Thank God we can do that. You got, we all got a lot of behind we need to forget. But you know, we can in Christ. Isn't that wonderful? We don't have to drag it with us. We can just say, thank you, Lord, for all that you've given to me. But so forgetting those things, the stuff that's back there, but reaching forth. You see, it isn't just forgetting, it's reaching. And there was, a, there was a desire for more. And his, his confession in Philippians 3, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable to his death. There was a, he wanted to experience everything that Christ had provided at Calvary. He wanted it to become his by experience. You know, you start praying that way. And guess what? Like I said Wednesday night, stuff will happen. God's answer to our prayer is very different than we're looking for sometimes. You ever experience that? Yes. Oh, you prayed, God, I want you to, I need you to you move in a situation. And next thing you know, you're flattening your face. Yeah. Well, you know, God just might be answering your prayer. He might be taking a situation so incredibly out of your hands, so well, what's the word? I'm, I'm lost for words there. But anyway, so completely out of, out of our hands that we come to the place that we needed to be to start with. When we don't just say, oh yeah, I know, I can do nothing without him. <laughs> it's a nice little sweet confession we all have. We know that. Where we say, oh my God, I can't do anything. And it becomes a reality. It dawns on us. I really can't do anything. I really am just as helpless as he said. But all is not lost. My hope was never in me to start with. It was always in him. He's just bringing me to that place where I can let go and say, all right, God, it's up to you now. That's what he wanted in the first place. You think he's mad at you because you failed and you messed up and you couldn't do it? No. He knew that to start with. The problem is we didn't. And you know, we, we mentioned some examples the other night about God being the God of the impossible. 